and we are back. What's up everyone? I'm Nick. In the last video, we learned the basics of how animations work. And in this video, we're going to look at animation curves. Some people call this animation timing, but basically anytime you have an animation, you can adjust how you want the animation to look by changing its kind of velocity and the speed that it goes through the animation. So we're going to look at all of the animation curves that come by default in our Swift UI code that we can add with just one quick little modifier. Now, of course, you can make your own custom curves if you really wanted to, but I would say that 99% of the time, the default curves are sufficient for whatever animation that you're trying to do. So we're going to keep it pretty simple in this video, and we're just going to put a bunch of objects on the screen and then animate them all with different curves. This way we can really highlight and see the difference between each of the curves because sometimes it is hard to see. Now I do want to note here that these animation curves are universal. They are not unique to Swift UI. They are used in all different programming languages. They're used in all different animation software. Uh, if you just Googled some of these curves, you will find a ton of resources online describing how animation curves work and how you can customize and make your own timing. But again, I would say that the default curves that come with SwiftUI are more than enough for pretty much everything we're going to do in this course. Welcome back, everyone. And we have another really fun coding video today. Today, we're talking about animation timing. So let's create a new file for all the code we're going to do in this video. Right click the navigator, new file, SwiftUI view. And let's call this animation timing bootcamp. Go ahead and click create. Once you're inside, click resume on that canvas. So we know we're all good and ready to start coding. So let's start with some very basic animation that we had in the last video. I'm going to create a V stack. The top of the V stack, I'll add a button. We're going to use the string protocol. I'm going to move fast here because we've done all this before. The button will say button doesn't really matter. And in the action, we are going to leave it blank for now. Under that button, let's add a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 20. And let's set the frame on this to a width of maybe 300. I want to do a little bit bigger, 350. 350 looks good. And let's also add a height of 100. Now let's add our state variable for the animation. We'll do at state var is animating of type bool equals false. And when we click the button, we want to toggle is animating dot toggle. And what do we want to animate? We want to animate the width. So we're going to do is animating. If it's animating, we'll do 350. Otherwise, we'll do maybe 50. Go ahead and click resume. Click play on the live preview. Let's make sure it's working. And let's add some animation. I'm just add it directly to this rectangle. So let's call dot animation. And like we did in the last video, we can call animation dot default. This is the default animation. And when we click it, we have the default animation. And in this video, we are here to discuss animation timing. So instead of default, we're going to look at the different animation curves we can look at. So let's press the period again. We can see that there's a whole bunch of other options here. And the main ones are ease in, ease in out, ease out, and linear. We're going to take a look at those first, and then we're going to get into some of the more complicated, like the interactive springs. And I think the easiest way to explain them is to actually just show you guys on the screen. So let's add a couple different animations. So let's start this. We'll just do default here. And I'm going to add four rectangles. So let's copy this rectangle. Let's paste another one below, another one, and another one. So we have four rectangles. Right now, they all have default timing. So if we click it, they'll all animate at the same exact speed. But let's change these timings. So for this first one, let's do dot linear. For the second one, let's do dot ease in. Third one, we'll do dot ease in out. And the fourth one will do dot ease out. Now these are all different animation curves. What that means is basically between when the animation starts and when the animation ends, the animation can go different speeds. So for a linear animation, it goes the same speed from start to end. 
And for ease in, it's going to ease into the animation. So it's going to go slow at first and then fast at the end. Ease in out is going to go slow, fast, slow. And then ease out is going to go fast and then slow. But all of these are going to finish at the exact same time. So let's click that button and just look at it quickly. So we can see that they're all animating. They're all getting to the finish line at the exact same time but we see subtle differences in some of these animations. And when you get better at animating, you're gonna to start to see which animations look better uh, for certain things. So like maybe something coming onto the screen, you wanna ease in so it comes onto the screen uh, or something leaving, you might wanna ease out. But just to exaggerate this quickly, let's change the duration on some of these. So when we call animation.linear, we could also add duration. So let's do it again. Let's call it dot linear. And there's two completions. And we can do this one with the duration. And here we'll put the number of seconds that we want it to take from start to end. So I want to use the same duration on all of them. So let's create a variable at the top. We'll do let timing of type double. You see that we need a double here. A double is basically just a number with decimal places. And we will do maybe 10 seconds. Most timings in an app are like one second or less, but we're just going to exaggerate this for now. So we'll add this timing variable into the duration. And we can do the same thing for all of these. So dot ease in, and we'll do the duration. We'll put timing, ease in out, duration is timing, and ease out, duration is timing. So let's go ahead and run these animations again and let's take a better look. So the first one, the linear, is going to go the same speed from start to finish. So over the course of the 10 seconds, it's going to go the same speed the whole time. That's this first rectangle here. So let's click it and you'll see it goes the exact same speed the entire time over the course of 10 seconds. And at 10 seconds, all of the timings meet up. I'm going to shut down the live preview, turn it off, press play again. So we're back to the starting state. And this time let's look at the ease in. And you'll notice in comparison to the linear, the ease in is going to start off nice and slow. And then it's going to catch up and finish at the same time as the linear. So we'll click the button and the ease in is starting off slow. So it's way behind the linear and they're going to at 10 seconds, they'll even out and catch up. Let's press stop one more time. This time we'll do the ease in out. So it's going to start off slow, then go a little faster, and then end slow. And we'll also watch the ease out at the same time. And the ease out is going to start the fastest, so it's going to get the, the lead. And then it's going to slow down so they all finish at the same time. So click the button. You'll see that this one is all way out ahead. This one's going fast, and then slow, then fast, and then they're all finishing at exactly 10 seconds. So animation curves will basically change the velocity throughout the animation, but the duration is how we change the overall timing that we want from start to finish. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about each of these. There are a thousand use cases with all different animations. I recommend going to make a view and play around with it in your app to find which timings look the best for which animations. It definitely varies. I definitely use all different ones in my apps and I definitely recommend you guys getting comfortable or at least a basic understanding on what the differences are. Now before we finish, I want to show you the spring animations because they're really, really cool. So I'm going to comment all of these rectangles out. I'm going to comment out this linear and let's actually add another animation onto this rounded rectangle. So we'll do dot animation. This time we'll call dot spring. This is probably my favorite of all the animations because it literally looks like a spring and it looks pretty natural. So let's resume. We don't need the timing, so we're not using this 10 seconds. It's just a default timing for the spring. And we have this really cool animation that looks pretty natural. I would say this is one of the most common animations for if you're showing a view or something that's like popping up on the screen. Uh, spring is really, really useful. And lastly, I want to show you guys how to customize a spring because sometimes, because sometimes you want a little more bounce in your step, a little more spring in your spring. We can call dot animation. 
dot and I'll start typing spring and we have this option with response damping fraction and blend duration and there are other animations I'm not gonna get into all of them but let's just use this one for now so for the response I'm gonna put on another line for the damping we will put on another line and for the blend duration I'll put on another line and I'm not an animation expert I'm not totally sure what the blend duration really does so I'm just gonna leave this as 1.0 for now let's take a look at the response and the damping the response is basically the duration that we had in our original. So for a response, if we did maybe 3.0, this spring will happen over the course of three seconds. The damping is how much we want it to bounce back on the spring. So if we do 1.0, it should not bounce back, I think, at all. So let's try it out. Over the course of three seconds, it animates and there was no bounce back. But if we make this damping fraction 0.5, it's going to do the same thing, except now we're going to have a big bounce back. So let's stop this. Let's play this. And now we have this, you'll see, bounce back because we changed the damping fraction. And I'm going to change the response here to one second. Let's change the damping fraction down to maybe 0.2. Now we're going to get this really funky animation. Let's press stop. Let's press play again. And if we click the button, we'll see that we now have a pretty big spring when it finishes. So that's pretty cool. And if we go back to smaller, it almost springs too much. So I wouldn't use this in an actual app. But at least you know how to customize your springs. I would say a damping fraction, maybe somewhere around 0 0.6, 0 0.7 is usually best. And I like animations to be short, so maybe like 0 0.5 response. And this is a pretty cool, natural looking spring. So again, play around with all these timings on your own time, uh, but now you know how we can customize animations with different animation curves, different animation timings. And there are a ton of resources online if you wanna just Google Swift animation curves, and you can actually get the charts and really dive into making your own curves. But if you don't wanna make your own curves, these ease in, ease in out, ease out, are super convenient, super handy, and definitely I use them all the time. I think you guys will too. So as always, thanks for watching. Again, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you guys in the next video.